Hey there, folks. So, uh, long time no video, I guess. Uh, tonight, I've got uh, one of those SP HDMI uh, out interposer type boards. Uh, the idea of this board is that it sits between the SP and whatever screen you've already got in there. Uh, technically, it is compatible with the um, uh, the stock screens like an AGS-101 or an AGS-001, but mechanically, uh, it's not going to fit. Those screens are a little bit too thick, and this board just physically has nowhere to fit within the SP. Uh, however, the IPS screens should all be compatible with this. Should. Um, but we'll find out. Um, this is from the same maker as the uh, as this kit here. Um, so a lot of the same caveats are likely to apply, but I suppose I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's let's take a look and see what we got here. So mine came with a um, bit of double-sided adhesive, a nice big old square, I'm guessing to, you know, kind of secure this stuff behind the screen. I'm not sure if we're going to use that. Uh, we've also got two wires, probably for the audio, because we will have to wire that up. This is not technically plug-and-play. We've got... Let me get all this out of here. Holy cow. Okay. We've got the board itself, which has three flat flex connectors on it. Uh, we will only be using two of them, but which two depends on uh, specifically how your uh, Game Boy is equipped. So the uh, this cable is going to connect to the board, and then it's going to plug right into... this connector right here. Let me get that in there. And then your IPS kit is going to plug into this connector here. You're supposed to um, pull the cable out from the hinge fold it up and then plug it into here, or if you have one of the uh, newer like board-based kits, uh, here it is, like one of these bad boys, uh, then you can use this adapter cable to plug into here and then you don't have to fold your ribbon cable up. But otherwise, I guess let's go ahead and get into it. I uh, just had this thing on the charger because it turns out the battery I had in there was very dead and is still pretty dead. Hopefully we'll be able to get through this. Uh, but this is just a stock Game Boy Advance SP that I have wired up with one of these uh, two-in-one one-chip backlight kits. Uh, I did just go ahead and throw it in a shell I had laying around, uh, but no real mods to this thing. Uh, let's see let's see if we can't get this installed. Uh, so I'm not going to do too much on the power usage side um, because my personal belief on that is that if you are concerned about power usage when you're using the HDMI out, well, I mean, you're going to be plugged into a TV. You might as well tether it to a charger as well. Uh, okay, let's get started. Realistically, I should put this in an SP and let it charge. Bear with me one moment. Alright, there we go. Got it plugged into an SP. We'll let that thing charge. Cool. So if we didn't care for audio, I suppose I wouldn't actually have to tear down the bottom of this SP because I'm fairly certain this cable is the same one that I already have plugged in. But 
I suppose we should do this the right way. Because every time we try and do something the quick way, it ends up taking twice as long as doing it the right way anyway. So, oh well. Put that over and take it off by lifting the SP off, that way we don't lose the square nut or any, none of the rest of this falls out. Set that aside. So if I flip this down, you can see I've already got that cable plugged in and I've already got it soldered. So I kinda don't want to undo that. Uh, so instead, I'm gonna come at it from a little bit of a different angle to undo that screw in there and take the hinge cover off. And then I'll pull it off from the other side. because for some reason that's going to be easier. All right. I'm going to drop one of these screws back in just to hold things in place. All right. Pull the hinge cover off, flip that open. And because this is an aftermarket shell, I can just pick these things out. There's no adhesive or anything holding them in. Uh the little ones I'll need a little spudger for, but this is one of the most difficult things about reshelling an SP is uh, getting these screw covers out without damaging either the shell or the screw cover. They are very finicky. They're, they're in there for good most of the time, let's just put it that way. So I said this was just one of those uh, standard one chip quote unquote two in one kits, but the screen is a little bit custom. Um, I didn't actually have any screens laying around that these kits are supposed to use that were intact. Uh, I had quite a few with some broken lenses, so I ended up just extracting the screen. There's another one I had. Just all I did was extract the screen from the lens and then put a new lens on there. Uh, so unfortunately there is a little bit of the screen edge cut off on the left and right, but it's, it's what I had to work with. So anyway, I am going to go ahead, flip that up and unplug that. We get this whole module out. And like I said, I am fairly confident these are the exact same cable because this cable is made by the same company. Like this, this backlight kit, everything in this backlight kit and this thing is made by the same company. So I don't see why they'd go out of their way to make a different part uh, and not to mention this side of the connector looks identical on both sides and this side of the connector looks identical on both sides so I think I think I can say with confidence that I can reuse my existing one and then it's supposed to fit somewhere in there but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to file that out. First thing though, I am going to 
Uh, nah, I should get it to fit first. Then wire it up. So on that note, let me put these three screws back in. Just to reduce the risk of damage. things fitting. And so as you can see those two connectors line up pretty nicely. So that should fit in there. Well I wish they had made it just a little bit shorter but maybe I'm hmm, I don't know maybe I'm missing something. Anyway. Is connectors down. It's not the easiest thing to plug in. Try this side first. It's kind of hard to see because there's all these components right in front of it, so you can't get it can't get it going in nice and flat. I have to send it at an angle and hope that's close enough, and then reposition when it's not. Oh, ha! That's why I'm doing it wrong, because it goes in from the front. Ha! Genius. Don't mind me, I was just wondering why it was too long. Just like that. Connect it. And then you fold it down, dummy. Good lord. Just like that. Nice and neat. And the board is designed to basically straddle the LCD itself. I'm not going to tape it down or anything, not yet. But I am going to use that to uh, mark this up. And I can see that the port is sticking up a little, so I will have to cut into this bottom. file this down. I will be right back. I'm going to use... Actually, I think I'm going to come at this with the Dremel. I've got... Yeah, I've got space. I'm going to mark the bottom, though. Oh, no, I can see the bottom. The bottom looks to be this shelf right here. So I'm going to go cut this out with the Dremel and I will be right back. Alright, if you don't have a uh, rotary tool on a drill press stand with flat end mill bits like I do, I don't necessarily recommend you get one for something like this because that's kinda overkill, but a cheap set of needle files uh, you can get these from like Harbor Freight or you know pretty much anywhere. Um, it's a few dollars. More than good enough for something like this. Anyway, I've got that cut out. A little bit large as usual, but it sits nicely, so we'll go for it. Next, I want to see what we got to trim here. So this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. 
and this one I'm definitely doing with the Dremel because we gotta cut out quite a bit in there. So, I think I need the marker for this one. I just marked off the outer constraints of where that port is and I am just going to cut out the inside of the shell for now until I can get this seated a little bit better and then we'll uh, take a look at what else I need to cut out. And again I'm going to do this on the rotary tool because of who I am as a person. Alright so that was not the easiest trim. I highly recommend doing this on a shell you don't care for to practice before doing this uh, because I got it wrong in about three different ways um, yep I'm also concerned that this is going to be a crack hazard long term so I'm going to see if I can't trim it fit just a little bit better uh, there is no more I can trim off the top so I need to come down on the bottom a little bit but I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up a little bit more and then we'll go from there. Alternatively, you could just plan for this to happen um, since it's even in the instruction photos and then do exactly what I did here and just make a separate bezel that you glue on because uh, dang. Uh, but long term I am genuinely concerned that that's gonna crack so I don't know how how well that's gonna hold up either way let's go ahead and move on with the install so for this type of kit you can just use the included short ribbon cable adapter if you have uh, one of the older uh, kits from this make or if you have one of the funny playing ones you just fold this up and then plug it into this connector here. It's kind of sketchy, but it should work the same. Um, also, if you have like an AGS 101 screen in here, in theory you could do the same thing, but fitment is going to be a problem. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. So this thing, the uh, backlight kit. Hopefully you didn't stick yours down to your screen too good or preferably at all because you'll have to peel it up if you're using this specific one. Uh, I used a small square of tape because I knew I'd be pulling this up but we want to plug that in Right here, uh, if your ribbon cable is creased, I just, like mine was, I just went ahead and uncreased it and it should be fine, hopefully. And I'm going to get another small square of tape. kind of hold everything into place. First, we want to plug this in. Screen seated in there. Try and push that into position, and then 
push the board into position, but you can see it's not really going to hold down with the tape too well because we have to run that whole ribbon cable underneath it. But we should push this feature back right there. Alright. And if all goes well, we should be able to reassemble. I forgot something. Nope, we can't reassemble yet. Uh, one more thing. I have to run the audio wires, which means we have to solder, which means sticking this down to the screen was an awful idea. But I think I can get away with just throwing a wedge in there. So these two, unlabeled on mine, these two connectors right here are for the audio. On the uh, instructions I was given, they are labeled, and this left one should be SO1 and this right one should be SO2. I have no idea why mine's unlabeled. I was under the impression that it was a retail kit, but it might be a sample. Either way, just solder that up. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna twist these together, make my life easier. All right, I don't know which is which, so might as well make cable management easier. I'm gonna get them mixed up anyhow. Ooh, that was an awful solder joint. I'll fix that in just a second. There we go. Ooh, good lord. Alright. I should have mentioned this earlier. I apologize. Um, be careful if you do attach this board to the screen. Be careful where you attach it because it can't go right up against the top. The, uh, the shell will hit it and, and knock it down a little bit. Uh, but... Let's run these wires. And everything seats. Okay. So now we can reassemble the top. It's not the right screwdriver. So because we're threading into plastic, it's always good to back the screws up like a eighth of a turn or so. We don't need them torqued within inch pounds. Um, we just need them snug. That's it. Oh, 
I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself by putting those covers on before I even finish testing this thing. Feed the wires through. And cha da! That's it. Now we just need to solder it up to these two points right here. SO1 and SO2. Iron is really gross. Okay. Probably helps to tin the wires first, huh? Gonna tuck most of the extra back into the hinge cover just to make wire routing a little bit easier. And speaking of which, I should reinstall that. Don't forget your speaker, don't forget your light pipe.
Alright, almost there. This is definitely something I should have tested before assembling, because there's a lot. It's kind of finicky. I mean, it's not too bad. Certainly not the worst now that the shell is trimmed, but if I have to pull it apart to do anything, it's a lot of work ahead of me. Alright, so this thing is still charging, but call it good enough for now. Quite a few of you are probably looking at this going, Oh, but Mako, why aren't you using your Mako batteries? And it's like, I do, just not in consoles that I'm going in and out of frequently because it's just, just OEM batteries are better for that. But anyway. That's interesting. So, unfortunately, I got nothing. Lights are on, but no one's home. Let's see if I at least get some capture. Let's see if I can narrow down where the error is. I will hmm. I think I've narrowed down the error to the source board. Oh, and you can see how much that moves around. So yeah, I think we do want to tape that down. All right, let me get this thing torn down and let's see what the heck happened. Or actually, it was off, so let's do that. Ah, okay, I do have capture. So the problem is different than what I thought it was. Nonetheless, I still have to tear this down. I will be right back. Okay, so good news, bad news. Uh, good news is I figured out the problem. Bad news is I have no idea why this board stopped working. I swapped in a, another one that I had and suddenly everything was working perfectly fine now. So I don't know, maybe I damaged one of the connectors. Who knows? I'll take a look at it more later because this shouldn't have stopped working. But anyway, got this all together. I put a little bit more tape as reinforcement down there and I think we're good to go to test it out. So if I power up the Game Boy, it is working pretty normally, pretty much as expected. Uh, I have totally misplaced my flash cart because of who I am as a person. So let's get another one. Let's try it out. So everything should still be working as expected. Uh, I don't want to update. It's one of my shoulder buttons messed up. No? Okay. Ugh. Let's try that again. So if we go into the options, all my buttons are working as expected. Let's find 240p test suite.
And you can see my screen's a little bit cut off, but like I said, that's that was a me thing. This isn't a stock lens. Um, but everything's looking good over here. Uh, it's... I mean, I didn't expect anything really to change over here because this is a stock screen. You know, it shouldn't have changed any of the performance for that. So let's go ahead and try out the capture now. Uh, so I've already got plugged into my capture uh, cable that came with another one of these kits, but this kit actually came with this cable, which I am going to switch over to because it's quite a bit more flexible on this side. Uh, but also I like the right angle. I think that's going to make things a little bit easier. So swap that on there and then that goes in there and then we're good to power it up. So one weird thing I noticed, I don't know if it's a problem with my kit or something else, uh, the internal screen stays on when we uh, when we have HDMI out, which is posing a problem because as this thing goes to boot into the flash cart, it just straight powered off last time. Uh, but right now it seems fine, so let's try out. It's 240p. How about the 240p test suite? Ha, that one. I'm just going to quickly run through these tests. Uh, feel free to pause if you want to check these. Uh, but nothing, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll step out if something comes up. Uh, the first issue that I'm noticing, and I could have told you this without having to pull up the circles, but it's not linear. And I don't know that there's anything we can do to change that on the GBA kit. Uh, these touch sensors do actually work while it is in HDMI mode. That is my bad. I did not realize that while I was doing the video. Uh, but I forget which is which, but whichever one does brightness, normally when you have HDMI plugged in, it will change the aspect ratio uh, between full screen, which is what we're seeing now, and what the GBA should be displaying, which is a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. Um, but brightness button only seems to affect the brightness on the actual LCD itself, which is still on for whatever reason. But at least it's working. You know, it's wired up. Uh, I bet this shadow sprite test is going to be horrible because my screen, my capture, and the screen you're work watching this on are all going to have good enough um, um, response times to just show a whole bunch of flashing, so I guess flashing warning. And there you go. On my preview it looks kind of choppy, but I suspect on the recording it's going to look nice and uh, smooth and, and flickery, I guess. Um, there's no filtering, which is, I guess, pretty ideal because uh, I don't trust them to do the filtering right anyhow if we wanted that. Uh, we're not going to do any of those lag tests. Uh, and I'm going to use different tests, I suppose, to test this. Or actually, you guys are going to have to tell me if there's any dropped frames or... Um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, screen tearing or anything like that. Uh, my preview window is pretty choppy, but I'm pretty sure the recording is going to be nice and smooth. And if the recording's not nice and smooth, then there's a problem with the kit, I guess. These things don't output smooth. Uh, now we have the grid test, so we can take a look at the scaling that the Game Boy is using. Uh, on the original screen, it should be one pixel black, one pixel white, and then repeat for the rest of the rows. So you can see if some of them are kind of fuzzy and some of them are kind of sharp, you can see that it's not using um, uh, linear scaling on this. And we can change it to vertical, see pretty much the same thing and then checkerboard, which looks like a hot mess. Uh, let's do sound test. I'm going to turn my speakers up, so forgive me. There's going to be a little bit of, uh, a little bit of um, echo. But on the left channel... Oh, it is capturing. It's just really quiet. 
and the right channel. Also capturing. Uh, it looks like it's being fed into Monio, mo Mono. Monio. Uh, it looks like it's being fed into Mono, though. Because that's pinging both channels on my capture. Both of those are, in fact. Turn that down. And it's going to be pretty much the same thing for the actual built-in audio. Um, I suppose you'll have to tell me how that sounds, because I totally forgot that was capturing. <laughs> so, uh, if you have good stereo separation, I, I guess let me know. Um, and I'll, I'll review it when I'm spl splicing this all together. I don't actually need anyone to let me know, but I'm just, you know, throwing that out there. Anyway, I think that's about that. Let's restart it and let's do one more game test. And I'm going to switch my monitor over to my HDMI capture so I can make sure that this is actually running smooth. So forgive me if I sound like I am turned away from the microphone because I am turned away from the microphone. Hey, that's not the save it's supposed to be. Alright, that's not the game I thought it was, so we're going to try something different. It is outputting at 720 by 480 by the way. My capture card is set to 1080, and the screen it's plugged into is 1440, but it still shows that weird resolution. Which makes me think it's kind of similar to that other Interposer board, more so than this thing itself. So maybe if they ever do an update to this, with the same firmware they used on this, maybe it'll be a little bit better. But then again, that thing is a power hog, and this thing is a little bit better. So, I don't know, who knows. What else do I have on here? I suppose I should try Super Mario Bros. Alright, I'm just gonna try playing through this to see if the lag is um, usable at the very least. And I am not playing through my capture, but I am capturing for your benefit. I, I have a splitter now on this thing. Oh, my B button got stuck. Ha! I've never liked these uh, glow-in-the-dark membranes, and I've never had a reason to until now. <laughs> I would say that, of course there's lag, uh, because it's impossible for this sort of thing to work the way it does without lag, but I certainly don't feel any. And it's not even like, oh yeah, he's so used to playing this game, he can compensate. No, I just don't feel any lag. With this setup, at least. So, hey, that's pretty nice. I suspect it's going to be pretty similar in terms of latency uh, compared to... Oops, uh, compared to all the other... Uh, oh no, this is what happens when I speak and play simultaneously. Um... I don't expect the latency on the HDMI side of things to be any different than any of the other one chip kits. I expect this to be pretty standard, but it, it is definitely playable. I like the GBA version better that actually shut this screen off though, because it's still running off battery, so that's... Oh, that's nice. The capture drops whenever I do that. I'm sure that's fine. Um, 
this is not going to be great on battery life. At least with the SP, you have the option of just plugging the Jesus thing in. But, eh. I used to be better at this game. I stopped playing it every day is what happened. But I think that happened with a lot of games. Oh! I got too ahead of myself and want the fire flower. It certainly works perfectly fine. And I can keep going, but probably shouldn't. We try just a few more quick tests. Oh, gotta switch that again. It's set to auto, so as soon as I power it off, it switches back to the computer. Okay. Oh. That's cool just powers off. I just want to run the motion tests one more time. Yeah, that's what I thought. The... I forgot that I should have been pulling this up on my pass-through. Um, yeah, it looks fine. I mean, blurry, uneven scaling, but this is still way better than composite, and it's still perfectly, perfectly usable. Uh, but the nice thing is it should just plug into just about anything that takes HDMI, so. Uh... Do... One more test. I want to do Game Boy Color side of things. Ugh. It keeps powering off. I think. I think this thing's gonna have a hard time with flashcards. Cause. Cause look at this, it keeps powering off on me. I can't even get it to boot the Everdrive. Uh, okay, so I guess we're not testing that. That's unfortunate to see, but sure. At least it still works with the Easy Flash. Or the uh, GBA flash cart. And of GBA flash carts, this is the least power efficient. Uh, so both the EverDrive and the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition should beat this original Easy Flash Omega, but this is still giving me hit and miss. Uh, I can't remember what I wanted to test, so I think we're just going to call it here. Try one more GBA game. I think I have my save on this. If not, I have my cart. Then reach. Nope, don't have my save on it. Because why would I have my save on it? Cart's right here. I just want to do Pokemon Emerald because I I show that off quite consistently, so 
Might as well show the color palettes in that game for a little bit more contrast. And I did finally beat the game. Woohoo! Took long enough, right? Anyway, 46 hours just to get in the Hall of Fame. So as far as I can tell, it's passing through the colors pretty faithfully. Um, it's not doing any translation or filtering or anything. Looks good to me. Uh, and again, I don't see any weird frame dropping, screen tearing. I did see one dropped frame for just a second. I wonder if that's just to keep the timing because HDMI is uh, 60 frames per second um, format, whereas the Game Boy Advance is like 59 point something. So it might just drop a frame every now and then just to keep sync. But otherwise it looks pretty darn smooth. I'm, I'm not too fussed with it. I mean, it, it's always going to be a compromise and since this thing doesn't mess with the clock frequency, uh, we can't overclock the GBA to do anything fancy with the frames. Um, surprisingly, the GBA itself is warm, but that might just be the battery charging. Uh, they can do a screen buffer, and then they can work a little bit of magic on the frames, but it's still going to require syncing eventually, so I don't know. I, I, I think this is about the best we can expect with the difficulty level for installing this thing. Um, it's decent. I... I think mini HDMI is, is an awful choice. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this and we're just gonna... we're gonna ditch the capture from here on out. Uh, let's see if I can even unplug this or if the Game Boy resets. Okay. So that worked. That's nice. That's good. Set that aside. So, I don't know. I guess let me let me wrap this up and we'll go from there. Uh, so, thanks to uh, Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this thing my way to check out. I didn't have very high hopes, and um, after trying it out, I'm still not really impressed. Uh, I think that long term this right here is going to be a problem. This is going to crack, especially with these clear shells. Uh, I have some experience modifying these shells and these two shells, like I don't know if they've improved it, I've been told that they've improved it, but these two shells are from the same batch. I've had both of these for a very long time and this one cracked because I trimmed it and there was just a little bit of pressure on it. This one has a little bit of pressure on it and I trimmed it, but I, you know, I, I don't know what else we can do. This thing just doesn't quite fit as well as I'd want. Um, realist, realistically, I think a bracket that goes in here and reinforces that jack would be a good idea. Uh, I'm not going to make one because I think that's something the manufacturer should make and I'm tired of supporting them for free so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, if one of you guys wants to do it, feel free but I don't recommend you share it if that's the case. Um, just because I think they should be held responsible for the junk that they're putting out. Uh, but anyway, as far as the actual capture, I mean it's fine. It's nothing we haven't seen before. I wish they would have done it a little bit better, but it works. Uh, as far as the install goes, like I said, I'm, I'm really not happy with this. I think this is going to crack. There's just not enough material here, even brittleness aside. Um, I, I don't think it's going to work well long term. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I'm probably not. Anyway. Uh, despite all that, if you still want one, there will be a link to the to where you can grab these things in the description. Um, it, it's one of those, if you know you want one, 
it should work for you just fine, but if you don't know you want one, probably pass, because it's not going to provide any extra functionality that, you know, if you're not sure you're going to use it, you probably won't. This is not the optimal way for playing Game Boy on the big screen. Um, but I guess it does work. Ah... Uh, Otherwise, I think that's about all I've got. I think I will get out of your hair and let you guys get back to it. Uh, one final thing I do want to mention is that no, this is not compatible with the Slate. It physically does not fit, not even counting if you file out a hole for the HDMI port. It just doesn't fit, right? The, the constraints, the, the room isn't there. That being said, I think it's still feasible if you're not afraid to file PCBs down. So I'm probably going to check it out, but that's going to be a separate video. Um, otherwise, that's all I've got for now. Um, links in the description. Let me know what you guys think. I think. I think they can do better, and I don't think we should keep supporting these manufacturers until they do better. But... If it does everything you want, then sure, go for it. Um, yeah. I'd probably recommend using it with the Funny Playing Kit, though. Not the uh, One Chip Kit. The Funny Playing Kit, specifically because that is laminated, uh, and because you can attach this board to the LCD and get it a little bit more sturdy. This screen is technically only held on to, by the edges of the adhesive and... Yeah, I don't know. Until next time, I guess. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you all next time.